I'm Sid and he's clever. Well, <laughs> other sports center. you to come and help me do this review the other day, you asked me an interesting question. And then you were like, oh, I didn't think gamers care about sports games. Care about sports games. Real gamers care about sports games. I didn't think so. And it got me asking a question, well, well why is that? And it's an argument, it's something you've asked before, is like, when I talk about, you know, when I'm shitting you know, games, or Game of the Year stuff, you're like, oh, I'm at 2K. And I've always just been someone that's like, no, it's not 2K. It's, just, it's my game of the year. But, I've, but I thought to myself, well, why is that? When you have a game, it's essentially perfect in the gameplay aspect. The players act like they're actually counterparts in real life. And there's animations and, and there's things like that that make it move so well. That when you already have that system in place, you need to do something to change the game up, and when it's annualized, there's not as much of a jump as if you had a break. Basketball on the interior, that's the kind of pass a coach loves to see. Sanders with a screen on Holiday. Bloods are with it, and Holiday picks him up defensively, and that one's good. In 2K16, what would you say is the biggest difference on 2K15? They made you able to defend a lot better. Unless you're really playing like Golden State and they just make it rain. Um, you can really, it's not, on, on the previous two Ks, that's not like a duck really good or really inside score. You basically went through people more often than not, which is not as realistic. If, they, if you try to make the game really realistic, like it's not like Kobe or LeBron scores 50 or 60 every game, whereas you could keep going back to the well with them yeah. in the other game. Whereas this game, they start to get a bit more tired or it doesn't work every time. If you don't share the ball around, you don't really do as well as a team. Uh, whereas this game, I've noticed when you have players that can defend, if you're, you're on an even pegging of if a team is really good offensively, whereas you just got blown out of the water in the other game. Colinari with the steal. Here's Parsons. Alright, what about the presentation? Um, so, 2K's menus have obviously come a long way. For anyone who's played some of the older games, the menus didn't always make a whole lot of sense. And sometimes you'll find something that's, you know, what is this doing here? But if you play it enough, particularly for the more um, hardcore basketball fans or people who quite enjoy it, you sort of get used to where everything is, but when you're new to the game, you're sort of exploring a bit. But I think the menu makes a lot of sense in 2 k 16 2K15 had the vertical drop rather than this one that goes horizontal and it's... I, s I still feel like 2K15 was a bit more easier to just to, just to visualise what menus we're using and going to where. And as you said, sometimes you'll look at something and go... But that's because you play it for a year, you're comfortable with it. Yeah, that's true, but I don't know, I, I think myself, it's a personal preference, obviously, but it's easier to see things doing the vertical slice rather than the horizontal slice. Side Holiday. Derek Bledsoe with the rebound. Feeds it to McCollum. And it's Aldridge, top of the team. And again, the Rockets good for two. He's been one of them. My gym is my favorite mode. Disclaimer. Um, I find... Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll talk about my gym. Um, so... For the people who like to build dynasties, dynasties, depending on your dialect, um, I quite enjoy building teams and managing, whereas some, some people are more for, say, my player. So for my, my GM, there's, there's quite a lot, quite a lot of challenges, like you can actually relocate your team, if you can look at that yet. 
Yeah, I, and that and that's something because I play the Madden games as well, and that Madden you've been able to do that for such a long time. Even when Madden switched to the new uh, engine and they built from the ground up, you could still do that. And I've been waiting for a basketball game to do that for such a long period of time. Uh, I think the next didn't we always talk? We always talked about it. I'm like, can I create players? Can I move my team? Shit, I can't move my team. Yeah. <laughs> But it'd be also good if you can move them outside of North America and Canada. So it'd be quite good, particularly with basketball being a global sport, if you could put them, like, as much as it wouldn't make sense for a lot of people if you just live in a town, it'd be, it'd be cool just to have, move your team wherever, whereas the cities are still predetermined that you can move to. Uh, is there any other significant changes you've noticed in my view? Apart from now you sign coaches, as a, like, negotiate with coaches in the off season. No, not really significant, no, I don't think so. It's the the refined it. I think that's good that they've kept what works going. That it doesn't need to, like if they come with some great ideas, that's great. But I'd rather they didn't take away things that are popular. I mean, yeah. And it is a pretty hefty mode too. Like it takes a while to get through just one season in my opinion. Well, that that yeah, the keeping the play. Well, I guess that how much do you want your basketball game to reflect reality? Trying to keep people happy. Um, basically, if you don't have your player isn't in the starting lineup, they're going to ask more playing time, and so unless you've got really old players or even rookies, it's difficult to keep those ones in the middle happy and get depth on your roster, um, and you can put them off and string them along, but eventually they're going to try and leave, or you're going to try and trade them, or um, yeah. You also have my lead, which is almost what used to be called. Probably five, you know, five years ago in two K, it used to be franchise mode. Before they um, did the, I think it was t the, when the PlayStation, the new generation consoles came out, and they had a new engine for these games, and they pretty much lost the franchise mode. Now you get it in my league, which essentially is just a, a dumbed down version of GM, where you can still draft, you still trade. I guess they came to people with a more passing, casual interest. Yeah. But I think that's also good because there's some times where I want to play with a team and I want to start and I'm like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm only, I only want to play a season or two and I just want to play with the Spurs. Also, you can compete against your friends. You can't take more than one player into GM mode. Mm. So you can build a team and to your style and, yeah. and compete. So like when, we, when we're here together like tonight, probably we'll play. And we might play... We, want, we might want to have a team each and then we can go against each other and build our own teams on our own or you do GM when you just have one team and you try and work together. The way it needs to be done. Yeah, well, Clark, I'm glad you referenced uh, specifically why you thought he had a little Greg Andy. I thought you were talking about the knees, my man. <laughs> he, uh, he looked a little hobbled out there for a moment. And then Hibbert with the dunk. My, my player where you basically get to choose, that's that's a bit different in this game where you actually get to go from high school to college. I, I've started one, um, I think it's, I haven't done too much with it, but I think they've added a bit more depth to it this year. And then bringing in Spike Lee, I want to see what they were doing with this story mode that they were trying. It's, I think it's a good step into making trying to keep the, my career more interesting. In the last game, you at least got your decisions, right? It's sort of like a role-playing thing where you can either be addicted to your teammates or you can cheer on and go with them or whatnot. And you kind of had that choice. This is more you're just watching... You're watching a story happen and you really have no... It's not that interactive, though, you're saying? Yeah. You, you have no choice in what you say or what you do, really, in, in the entire season. And it's a little bit frustrating going from what we had, and also the things they're talking about off the court don't seem to be reflecting what you're doing on the court as well. They don't have a major bearing on what happens. Be because you're starting on such a low overall, you're starting on such a low overall, but in the cut scenes they're talking about Oh, we've got to get this multi-million dollar deal. The next up and come, you're playing great right now, but you know I'm I'm playing five minutes a game and I'm averaging ten points in five three minutes or something for that's the not, first season. bad. Um, so then after the first season, there's something that happens, and then there's very little cutscenes from then on. 
which I'm afraid when I get back into it and I'm a, and I finish my second season, um, it's going to go back to what it was in previous games where it's like, well, I finished two seasons now and now it's just repetitive. I still got the skills though. <laughs> Too bad you got kicked off the squad. Oh, that's because Coach is a hater. He only wanted one player to shine, but it's all good though. My man Freak is extra nice with it. We both go into the league. Both? Oh, you heard me, little sis. Ugh. Mr. Cracker Don, you already changed your breath? Nah, see, that's my new mouthwash. Hmm, distill. Oh, you got jokes <laughs> only in the AM. Why you why? two always beefing? Yo, Vic, you are no good on the curb bum. Let's just keep it 100. Uh, two times 50. If you were going to talk to someone who, sort of how we play FIFA when we pick up a game every four years, I feel like, like, casual, like a casual player, well, let's go with a casual player. If, if they had last year's game, would you suggest that they get this year's game? Or it really depends how much of a basketball fan you are. I think for, if you're quite casual, I think you can afford to give this and this for a year or so. If you have a passing interest in the NBA and the updated rosters, etc., matter to you, um, you can probably afford to miss a year. But if you're really into your, into NBA, this, this game probably does enough to justify a purchase of it's about what seventy dollars. Yeah, at the moment, probably seventy to eighty dollars. It's not a huge outlay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching this review. Uh, I'm Daniel. This is Josh. Hope you enjoyed the. 2K review, and be sure to check out Game Club. See you next time. <laughs> next year. <laughs> and that's it for our broadcast here tonight, but we're just getting started on a new season in the NBA. For Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Kevin Harlan, and the entire 2K sports crew, I'm Ernie Johnson. We'll see you again soon.